Howdy folks, welcome back to Steampunk Desperado channel. Now I've been saying for a long time that Steampunk is not dead, that that although it seemed to have peaked in popularity nine or ten years ago, that it is coming back, despite the unfortunate bad performance of recent properties like Mortal Engines, which I thought was great, and as did Mrs. Desperado. But anyway, there's other new stuff that's coming out that has given me a lot of hope, and one of the, these is the series Carnival Row, which is a streaming series available on Amazon Prime. Now, these are all available at once, so you can binge watch them if you choose. You don't have to wait uh, a week for the next episode, as they're doing with The Mandalorian on Disney+, Plus, for example. Anyway, I decided I had to check it out. Now, this is what I call a a steampunk fantasy, and that it takes place in an entirely fantasy world, not there's no historical basis for it. And it stars Orlando, Orlando Bloom, you may, may remember him from a little movie called Lord of the Rings, and, and Cara Delevingne, and the only thing I've seen her in was a sci-fi oddity called Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. Kind of interesting, but not the greatest. Anyway, in this, in this show, she's a lot better, I think. Now, this, is, this sh series has also been called a neo-noir fantasy. This alternate world is very much like our own. It's got a Victorian level of technology and kind of a Victorian culture. The difference is that the Fae and all sorts of other mythical creatures, that's kind of, I guess that's kind of the general, generalized terminology, the Fae, encompasses all of them. The Fae are real, and they have their own homeland that is called Tyrannoch. And uh, Tyrannoch kind of had a disaster happen. It was invaded by this totalitarian nation called the Pact. And a lot of the Fae fled to a democratic nation across the sea called the Berg. Now the Berg is a lot like Victorian England. And they speak with English accents and so on. They have their own, their own aristocratic, aristocratic people and, and so on. Now, the Berg had tried to intervene to help out the people of Taranach, but it, it didn't work out. They ended up retreating, withdrawing all the troops, and they basically lost the war. And they did end up, end up admitting a whole bunch of Fae as refugees, although the people aren't really happy about that. They really don't like the Fae all that much. And so, Cara Delevingne, she plays Vignette, who is a former resistance fighter for the Fae, and also now she's a refugee in the Berg, which is the capital city of the Berg. And, and Orlando Bloom plays Philo, and he's a, a police inspector for the constabulary, a very stand-up guy. and. And they were once lovers when, when um, Philo was a soldier in the uh, Burgish army over on Turinok. So since then he disappeared, but she thought he was dead, and, and now that she finds out he's alive, she's very, very angry with him. There's a lot of bad blood now. She feels like she was abandoned. And there are, oh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of bigotry and stuff that uh, people like Vignette encounter in this world of, of the Berg. And, and to me, it seemed a little bit heavy-handed, and it was like a kind of a metaphor for, for today's refugee situations, although uh, kind of simplistic. But nonetheless, it's, it's pretty fascinating. It's a pretty interesting world with a lot of, uh, uh, with a, a lot of depth to it. The, the Fae have several different races. Uh, Vignette is a Pix. She's like a, she's like Tinkerbell, only human-sized. She has little fairy, little um, fairy wings. There are also Pucks, named after the character in Shakespeare, I assume, that are like satyrs, and they have these ram's horns on their heads. There are centaurs with the, with the body of a horse. Uh, there are trolls, and then these little gremlin-type critters. So, but those don't feature a lot in this show, mostly so far. 
mostly you see the fairy, the, the picks type, and the pucks. Anyway, they, um, these Victorian type people, there are these aristocrats, and they will hire them as domestic servants and so on, but they, otherwise they won't have anything to do with the Fae, and a lot of them just want to ship them all back. And then, they have, then a lot of them live in ghettos and so on. And one of those ghettos being Carnival Row, where there, there are these brothels that cater to humans who like to come and have intercourse with Fae. <laughs> and so, so it's kind of seamy at times. There's, there's, there's some nudity um, with some rather good looking actors and uh, a fair bit of violence and their beginning episodes involve serial killings and then also terrorism and and furthermore a mysterious creature who's eating people <laughs> and uh, some conspiracies that get rather violent uh, political machinations in the human world so that all keeps it pretty interesting at first it seemed a little bit uh, to be a little bit heavy-handed you know they had like for example these there are these snooty aristocrats who, who are, are just can't stand the fact that a puck moves in next door who happened to mix money and, and make it big and uh, that kind of thing. So, but what is interesting is that they have humans that are of different, to us, different races, black and white humans. That, are, that get along just splendidly and don't seem to notice any difference, but they're all really bigoted against the Fae. <laughs> they, they just think they're under, you know, underlings like criminals, uh, uh, layabouts, that sort of thing. So it's, it's got a lot of excitement. It's got a rather, a rather interesting and complex storyline so with some plot holes. Uh, Mrs. Desperado was particularly unhappy with the first episode where you see a bunch of uh, vignettes helping a bunch of Fae escape a concentration camp that was run by the Evil Pact. And these creatures that have wings, they're not flying. The, I always figured that, that, the fae, that the Pact being evil had like clipped their wings somehow so they couldn't fly, but they don't really explain this. The sets are great, the costumes are great, the effects are good at times, but rather uneven. The the picks that have the wings, the wings are mostly just props. They'll kind of hang on their backs, except when they actually have to fly, and then they're CGI'd. So that's a little jarring at times, and they and they look a little bit flimsy to in order to bear a human-sized person aloft. But nonetheless, it it is a really fascinating concept. It just it kind of it reminds me a little bit of of the nineteen was it nineteen eighties show called Alien Nation, where all these aliens. Uh, crash land and end up living in Los Angeles and, and encounter a lot of bigotry and so on. So it's kind of a similar thing, only a lot more interesting and rich. So in general, I would say that I really am enjoying the show. I've gotten about halfway through so far, a little bit past halfway. The storyline is good and the, the settings is, are great. I have a little bit of an issue with it being a little bit too heavy-handed in that you know the they're trying to say that people who you know want to restrict immigration are like evil <laughs> and so on uh, but in general I would give it four out of five gears a pretty good show I would definitely recommend it if you have Amazon Prime you can you can watch it streaming so I would say go do that check it out please let me know in the comments below what you think of this review and uh, Please like and share, get the word out, let's, let's spread the steampunk gospel to the world. For now, however, this is Vaughn Troidy, the Steampunk Desperado, saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.